Well, HIPAC is the hyperthermic uh, chemotherapy to be used in ovarian carcinoma. Actually, uh, this is a very uh, hot topic in our literature nowadays in our congresses. Uh, it has been actually been in use in ovarian carcinoma for around 30 years. And the numbers uh, of the publications and the number of the centers suggesting HIPAC to the patients has increased dramatically within the last five to 10 years. Uh, and if you look to the literature, actually it seems to be promising. Uh, but however, there are a lot of also criticisms uh, against the HIPAC. One of them is that the whole the published literature, a great majority is retrospectively published. So different drug regimens, different protocols, different patient settings. So it is impossible to have a conclusion using all these retrospective data. And there is only three prospective randomized trials, which is very promising, actually. The first one came from Greece many years ago. It was done in recurrent ovarian carcinoma. And the authors suggest that, especially in platinum-resistant cases, they had a very good survival advantage. However, the trial was criticized heavily and actually almost a great majority, almost all of the society at the moment uh, could not accept the, the results of this trial. And at the end, if you look to the survival data of this trial, the median survival, and compare it, it with many other studies that did not use HIPAC, actually the numbers are almost the same with the, uh, com in, in, when compared uh, to the results of the high excellence centers. The second trial came from Netherlands just one and a half years ago from the real study. Uh, it was in primary setting and the neoadjuvant setting, so the patients in stage 3 ovarian carcinoma uh, who were inoperable has received three uh, cycles of chemotherapy and then randomized uh, in the interval debulking surgery to either receive HIPAC or not. And in the results, both the quality of life and the progression-free and the overall uh, survival was higher in the arm uh, using HIPAC. But again, if you dig into the data, there were a lot of criticisms. For example, uh, the, in the, this, this group of patients actually only that from the real, you know, recruited in the, in the study, only constitutes 5 to 10 percent of the whole ovarian cancer patients. Not the whole scenario, but just the 5 to 10 percent. The survival that she's reported is very low compared to many previously published high survival data just only with good radical surgeries. And it's a very long 10 years uh, data and the patient uh, numbers per center per year is very low. So again, it produces a lot of questions in our minds. And this is followed by the third trial, which was the Korean trial. And the, the trial found just no difference between the two arms using HIPAC in the primary setting of ovarian carcinoma. Uh, and of course, it was a negative study. So at the end, these three prospective trials could not make a clear conclusion to all of us. And that is the reason why ESGO guidelines at the moment do not recommend HIPAC routinely to all patients, either in the primary or interval debugging surgery. We need really more data. And currently the technology is growing. We have new HIPAC technologies. We have already ongoing other further studies. And let's see the results of these studies and decide accordingly. We don't need any more retrospective data. We need well-designed prospective data, maybe using PARP inhibitors, maybe addition of, uh, you know, BRCA status of the patients. Uh, these new data will, prom will probably give, give some window for the HIPEC to be routinely recommended for the primary or recurrent ovarian carcinoma. Mm -hmm.